Om Shri Sai Ram, offering my humble pranams at the lotus feet of our beloved Bhagwan, respected elders, respected office bearers, and my dear sisters and brothers, a warm welcome to you. Before coming to the podium, I was expected and instructed to practice sealing on desires. I was requested to finish my talk in less than 15 minutes because the green leaf has been laid already. I am in between you and the lunch. So as quickly as possible, I will try and finish what I want to communicate today. A few of the slides I may just run past because several of our previous speakers have already spoken on this. For example, why would we have the nine-point code of conduct? Uh, one thing that I would want to bring to your attention on this picture that you see here is that out of the nine, Swami has clearly laid a lot of importance on five as personal sadhana. So the finger first points at us, and then we go to the family and the community. So there's a lot of importance given on ourselves trying to improve, and then looking at our immediate family or the community at large. There is also a quotation that's there on our All India website, which speaks about why is there a spiritual wing of the organization. Uh, the website is available for people to go ahead and read. Uh, the tree here clearly says why we have a spiritual wing within the organization. As each one of us are practicing our, our seva and sadhana, uh, we need to go deeper within. The roots is something that we don't see. So the spiritual wing gives us a lot of opportunity to stay grounded. right? And listed below are some of the regular activities that are happening in most of our samitis and centers. Starts with Vedam, Bhajans, Nagar Sankirtan, seminars like this, Japam, Swadhyaya, Jyoti meditation, study circles, spiritual talks, and the list is endless. So, like Brother Yashwant mentioned, just like you've got multifarious seva opportunities, you've got multifarious opportunities to practice your spiritual sadhana as well. There's always going to be a question that people may ask saying, why should we do this, right? Because Swami has told us several times in the discourse that you are embodiments of bliss. And when we do a bhajan or we do a vedam, we feel happy. Right? So many times people have this question saying, I'm already an embodiment of happiness. Why should I go to a center or a samiti and do bhajans? Right? So that's where Swami says, till you realize that you're an embodiment of happiness, you would need to drill a bore right down into the earth to bring that water out. That's the reason we have the waterfall symbol here, which says, you would have to be in that environment which is going to help you connect to that fountain of happiness within you, which is why we have the Samiti and the center organizing several such uh, activities. Right? The next slide, uh, importance in today's context, why would we have bhajans? Uh, Swami is told we are all in the Kali age. Uh, the easiest and quickest sadhana to redeem ourselves is Namaswarana. Right? So, in each of the ages, there were different uh, sadhanas that were given to people. Back in the, uh, in the age of Krita, it was meditation. In the Treta Yoga, it was rituals or yagnas. In the Dwapara, it was the age of worship. And Swami says the easiest uh, form of redeeming yourselves in the Kali age is Namaswarana. Right? Uh, many of us, we work in companies, uh, and this is a common question that happens on a Monday morning. Weekend hang it though, yen madidre. And invariably we say, India Australia match not there. Or I would say, e movie not there, jailer movie not there. Uh, hardly are we going to go back to office tomorrow and say, I spent an eight hour day in trying to understand the nine point code of conduct. Is there anybody here who can raise their hand and say, yes, I did this? Okay, I see three out of the 150 who have assembled here. So, one point that Swami himself has told. It is not shameful to practice. It is okay. He clearly says this. Why should you be ashamed to say Rama, Krishna, or Govinda? You say those names and you feel ashamed, but you go on the street singing da 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 da, which is a film song that Swami has quoted in the discourse. Discourse in 1997, July 19th. So there is no shame in us having to say that we are going to a samiti or going to a center and doing bhajans. There's absolutely no shame in doing that. Right? Uh, so, the way I've structured the slides is basically trying to come up with what the importance is and uh, slowly come to the uh, point of why is it important to have community participation. 
right so swami has clearly said samyak kirtanam itihi sankirtanam right which is singing together in harmony is sankirtanam many times we think uh, okay in the morning i sat at home and did bhajan i turned on radio sai and youtube we have multiple playlists today soulful bhajans mellifluous bhajans and you have multiple playlists you just turn on one of those and then you just some of us listen some of us probably uh, follow along with it and so on that is only kirtanam which is only going to help you get your individual bliss right but what swami says is sankirtanam can confer the welfare uh, can confer bliss on the entire universe right so this is another discourse clipping from uh, from 1992 uh, swami gives another name for sankirtanam as samuhika bhajana and uh, this was first institutionalized by our sikh gurus uh, way back 3 400 years back uh, when uh, sikhism was prominent in the country and uh, our own beloved swami started the pandari bhajan group he did not go alone on the street singing bhajans he had a set of boys younger children uh, uh, boys and girls who would go along with him and do this so swami himself never uh, you know uh, preaches before practicing we all know that so swami set the pandari bhajan group in order and uh, that that is the importance that swami himself laid to coming and singing bhajans in a community right i am just using the word bhajans because invariably when we think of regular attendance in devotional meetings the first devotional meeting that comes to our mind when it comes to a samiti is bhajan definitely vedam and other like you know maybe practicing of lalita sahasnamam or uh, you know devi mahatmyam all of those would come in but the first thought that comes to our mind is coming to a center or a samiti and singing bhajans right so a very nice analogy that swami gives uh, if i were to sing alone in this hall and try and call for swami i need to have utmost amount of devotion to do that which is like a single thread in a in a kerchief right so swami says when multiple people sing together the threads are woven and then the kerchief is able to pull swami much faster he gives the example of a rope with multiple threads right so that's the importance that swami lays on us coming together within a samiti or a center and and doing bhajans so i don't know if people have actually seen this meditation bowl right uh, if you ring it once you just hear the bell once but you constantly keep churning around it the sound tends to increase a lot right so that is the kind of context that we have when we do bhajans uh, in a community or in a center like this the the vibration that comes out of unison singing is far higher than an individual trying to sit and do that right swami says that today's atmosphere is polluted so if we think that we are doing bhajans alone it's only our individual home or room that is getting purified uh, so this was another thing that happened uh, during the covid time right so we were all thinking we have to continue our sadhana let's get into doing online bhajans that is the biggest thing that happened then and that was required two or three years back right and today there are people who say nan online ad bhajana maartta idene nan yenak center ku hogbeku right multiple reasons for getting to the center and uh, you know you know our mind it's a monkey mind right transport sikthilla uh, uber cost thumba jaasti ide nanage bhajane aadmele mane hogod late agutte all these are mind reasons that uh, you know the uh, it, it plays it plays on you please do not do that the uh, importance of coming to a center and singing bhajans you will realize it when you participate in one such right uh, how many of us here have actually taken part in uh, i can speak for sai gitanjali uh, the concluding session of the akhand bhajan between 4 and 6 on the second uh, on sunday of every year right so whoever comes to gitanjali for the akhand bhajan we always tend to participate in 4 and 6 we see probably a handful of people in the night which is more like individual singing right we'll have one or two people but that 4 to 6 the kind of vibration that we get we probably wouldn't even need a microphone to sing right so that is the kind of advantage that you would get when you come and do a a, a samiti bhajan right uh, then swami asked right who needs bhajans so we all think when we go to a samiti or a center uh, you know i am singing bhajans for swami right i am leading bhajans for swami i am fo- following bhajans for swami swami has clearly said this in a discourse saying that god doesn't need anything he doesn't need anything he is institutionalized this for our redemption so if today we participate in a samiti bhajan or a vedam session or a rudram chanting it is for our own benefit 
if we don't realize that, uh, then uh, it's probably we need multiple more lifetimes to realize that. Swami has clearly said, your bhajan makes you happy, right? So it's, it's again coming back to that personal sadhana point. We are doing everything for ourselves, for our own soul's redemption, right? So Swami is ever blissful. It's like going and uh, it's like saying, uh, and get torcha. You would have heard that in a very common colloquial way in Canada, where are saying, Tirupati ke laddua. Something like that. You're trying to go give Swami bhajans when he is bliss incarnate, right? So you wouldn't want to do something like that. So you're doing all of this for your own uh, benefit. Importance of regularity. Uh, so we see the fifth point says regular attendance at devotional meetings, right? Conducted with the organization. So uh, this is one very nice discourse that, that Swami has given in, in, um, in 1998. Start early, drive slowly, read safely is a common thing that Swami has said. Multiple of our speakers before have said, start from the age of Balvika, slowly mature by the age of youth, get into the right kind of practices when you get to adulthood. Right? And Swami gives like a pretty scary example, right? When the news of, uh, you know, the servitors of God of death is cast on you. The, the, they say the Pasha Nul, right? The, the, the uh, followers of Yama will put that around your neck. When people around you give up hope, right? There's your immediate family, your wife, your children, your parents, they give up hope on you. Your wife and children actually start crying, saying that, you know, this person's going to leave away. Is it possible at that point in time to think of God? This is a question that we need to ask ourselves, right? At that point in time when our final calling comes, can we actually think of God? Which is why the word regular comes in here. If we have not started that practice at a much younger age, we are not going to be able to do that when we become older. Right? Uh, I remember very well uh, in the beginning of today when our respected uh, Venkat sir spoke of our previous state president, sir, Nagesh Thakapa sir. He said uh, uh, he has got a very typical, you know, character and a temperament when he comes inside and presents himself in a meeting. He comes with that calm and poise and says he's been doing that for the past 35 years. Do you think uncle would have got that without practice? It's practically impossible, right? It's, so we can actually take local examples like this to really draw inspiration and see what is the importance of doing this regular practice, right? Going on to the next uh, slide. Uh, some of the modern habits that are uh, uh, going to derange your regularity. Uh, today is the age where people want immediate response, immediate gratification, right? So the brain today keeps looking for several such things saying, I want immediate result. Now, if we don't put the effort, we are not going to get result. Say, so today I attend a Samiti Bhajan in the evening. I can't expect Swami to, you know, come in my dream and say, good, good job. We have to keep doing that regularly so that we're able to get that result. Some things which hamper the setting of a pattern or a regularity is um, information overload, right? So uh, how many of us today are a part of WhatsApp groups pertaining to the organization in which we do not contribute to anything? You can be open. This is a closed group. You will not. This is a no judgment zone. Nobody is going to judge you saying that, you know, you're, you're a part of something that is uh, you're not contributing to. Right? So, personally, I can speak. There is one way you can figure this out on WhatsApp. You can figure this out on WhatsApp. You have a way in finding out. I was a part of 63 groups in which I'm probably contributing to two, the Sai Gitanli Bhajan group and probably the Vedam group once in six months. Right? So, the first thing that we need to figure out for ourselves and self-awareness is, are we getting too much of information that's hitting our head? Right? Uh, Screen time, uh, it's, it's uh, scientifically proved saying that, you know, 10 minutes of in-person time is going to improve your cognition and mental ability than having to spend hours together in front of a phone. So this is a clear response to online bhajans, online sadhana. As much as possible, keep that as your last option. Come to the samiti and participate, right? Uh, headphones, another way in which we tend to listen to radio sai bhajans or I don't say that listening to radio sai bhajans is bad. Many times we tend to turn that on in the headphone and listen. That is clearly going to lead to Alzheimer's in the long run, right? So I'm giving some very basic research, uh, you know, information which will tell you what is the importance of physically leaving your comforts of the home and coming here. 
and somewhere i feel even the organization today has kept online channels for youtube so that we see a samarpan online or we see a bhakti bhavanandam bhajan online uh, ideally i feel this is a deterrent for people to come physically and participate right i do understand that we need to have these in place for several reasons but don't give that as an excuse saying how do na samarpan bandu online and care the speaker spoke very well uh, but that's not what it is the the kind of uh, advantage that you would get when you go physically and participate in one is is far higher right some uh, steps to improve uh, your uh, regularity is uh, you would see the shape here this is typically used in organizations when we are planning our career right so similarly if you look at yourself in a spiritual organization your sadhana is also can be planned like this right you can go deep in one sadhana which is a i shaped kind of a path we are drilling down deep i am only a bhajan singer i will concentrate only on bhajans right so that is one way in which you can choose to develop your your sadhana another one is a t shaped where you kind of understand few other activities that exist and you go deep in one you have a pi shaped which is you go deep in two and so on today most people i don't know we suffer from this thing called fomo have you come across this alphabet called fomo it's called fear of missing out right oh alli sagithanalli ili bhajane nadita ade brindavanalli there is some talk going on parthinalli there is a seva there is something else you know there is a radio sai thing going on here there is some you know cleaning activity going on there and then you get into that mental stress saying you know 15 20 opportunities what do i take in front of me right i understand what brother yashwan said it may contradict a little bit which says don't say a no to the uh, any opportunity that comes your way but the first thing that we need to do is have that awareness why are you coming to do a bhajan can anybody answer this i mean we attend so many bhajans here in geetanjali in our own respective samitis and so on uh, maybe i would padma sister why do you come and attend a bhajan are you sure that is the reason have you ever thought deep saying why do you attend a bhajan sorry i'm putting you on a spot not trying to anybody else wants to take this question sure sir no no i'm asking why do you come for bhajan people it's a textbook answer to say purification of mind so, sorry you can connect with some at home also no group singing group singing okay groups so for the sake of peace that sounds kind of a close answer i agree personally if you ask me i like playing the kanjira i come to sai gitanli to play the kanjira i'm being very uh, you know very very down to earth and shameful in saying this i love playing the kanjira so i come to sai gitanli for kanjira do i get bliss out of it yes i definitely enjoy getting sorry correct great so there are other reasons where uh, yeah sure sir correct so these are these are the right reasons for why we should come i'm not saying a reason like mine is a wrong reason to come i love playing the kanjira i get an opportunity to come to geetanjali and do that so i come right so one thing that we should be aware is why are we choosing a particular activity that we want to do so i'm the whole premise that i'm coming from is how do you set a regularity if you are able to align to something that you value so today i value playing kanjira which is why i naturally come on a sunday evening to play uh, to to bhajans right today i, I value maybe chanting rudram or or understanding things so i have been shown the time i'm probably going to stop one one last bit which i may want to say is because we operate in a community and uh, we are expected to uh, you know come and participate the the role of leadership is very very important so people who are leaders bhajan coordinators it's very important to become servant leaders many times i've heard people say coordinator karadru adike nan bhajane hogti idini which is a very wrong reason it won't last you will come one month two months three months six months and then eventually it will fizzle out right so don't do that make it a very uh, you know encourage and enable people sadhana right so that's one bit that i've come across and one way to set regularity is a is a 2190 rule it takes 21 days to set 
a, a habit and 90 days to make it a routine, right? So if you're able to follow this, coming to a Samiti, to a Nagar Sankirtan, to whatever else is a regular sadhana, you would be able to do it. I love this photograph of Swami's feet, so I use that as the end. Thank you. Sairam.